If you want to up your rowing game with some strength training, then this is the video for you. So if you've purchased a strength program from a coach, then these are some considerations that you might want to take into account when you're combining your strength and your rowing workouts. I'll throw in this caveat there too, that if you have never made a program yourself, please make sure that you are purchasing a program from a coach who knows how to give you the right spread of movements, who knows how to progress you safely. Please don't build a strength program on your own if you don't have that knowledge to be able to do that properly. So definitely make sure that you are purchasing one and using these tips when combining them. My name is Alicia Clark and I'm an ambassador with You Can Row 2 and let's get into it. Maybe you have or maybe you have never strength trained. That's okay. You'll still be able to understand these tips even if you have or have not. So this video can compare you before or after you have purchased a program. So to start, when we are strength training, strength training is made up of six general movements. I'm going to go very briefly over each one. The first one is the squat. So these are things like front squats, back squats, goblet squats, any movement where our knees, ankles, and hips are bending and extending. So that's going to be a squat. Next is a hinge. So hinge movements are RDLs, deadlifts, you know, single leg variations of that. Those are a couple examples of hinge movements, meaning we are hinging from our hips. The next is a lunge. So lunging gets into using a single leg. So using one leg at a time. So that helps with balance and things like that. Any type of lunging, a box step ups, things like that. Next is going to be your pushing and pushing movements are horizontal and vertical. So things like push-ups are examples of horizontal pushes and then things like overhead presses, which are vertical pushes. Next is your pulling movements. So you have your bent over rows, which is your horizontal pulling movement. And then vertical pulling movements are things like lat pull downs or pull ups, chin ups, things of that nature. Last thing that we have is carry. So carry can also be core. And yes, a lot of these movements do use your core in them. But as far as carry is concerned, that is things like farmer carries, unilateral carries, overhead carries, anything where you are picking up a little bit heavier weight than normal and uh, walking it from one place to another. So those are our six movement types, squat, hinge, lunge, push, pull, carry. So those are important to keep in mind. We're gonna talk about rowing here in a second. So with the rowing stroke, rowing mimics mainly three of these movements. And that's going to be the squat, the hinge, and the pull. So at the start of our stroke, our ankles, knees, and hips are all bent. Then when we start our drive, everything's extending. Our ankles, our knees, and even our hips a little bit are extending. And then what, that's the squat. Then when we open our body, there's the hinge. Then when we pull into the finish, there is our pull. So we have our squat, hinge, pull. So the rowing stroke is mostly mimicking those three things, squat, hinge, and pull. Why is that important? When combining rowing and strength training, you don't wanna overtax yourself on the same movements, especially if you have a hard rowing workout. So, when you have a very hard squat day or a very hard deadlift day, or even a very hard pulling day, you could find that you hop on the rowing machine and it's a little bit harder to row than it normally is because you've already taxed yourself so much in these movements that your body might not have as much to give on your rowing workouts. That's another point. Strength workouts before rowing workouts. Always do the strength first. So it's important still to do all six movement patterns when you're strength training. Just because you wanna get better at rowing, which is the squat, hinge, and pull, doesn't mean that you should only squat, 
deadlift, and bend over row. You should be doing all of the movement patterns because that way you are becoming more rounded. That'll help you be a healthier body overall. So don't just squat, hinge, and pull to get better at rowing. Do all of them. Push especially because that's the biggest muscle group that you're missing when you're not rowing. So how does this apply? Kind of mentioned it already. When you have a heavy squat, deadlift, or push, or pull day, sorry, try to make sure that if you do need to row afterwards, that it's more of a steady state workout. If you have to do a hard rowing workout after strength training and it can't be on a separate day, I recommend doing it on a push day. So if you have push-ups that day or some overhead presses, do those hard workouts after maybe that kind of a strength training focused day. If you have a really hard, you know, short, fast workout that's really gonna be challenging your system. So that is my biggest recommendation to combining strength and rowing. You don't have to strength train and row on the same day. That is entirely up to you and your schedule. You know, are you gonna strength train twice a week and then you're going to row three times a week? You can do one on each day for five workouts. So uh, row, strength, throw, strength, row. That could be an example. Or if you need to, you can do, you know, row and steady, or sorry, strength and steady state, strength and mid distance, and then have the short and fast hard workouts if that's what you do on that separate day. And then that would be three days of training, but the training blocks would be a little bit longer because you need to strength train and then row. So you need a little bit more time on those days if you choose to do it that way. So, if you're looking to kind of get into this strength training a little bit more, I actually have something coming. If you're watching this video a little bit later, it may already be out. And that is a strength program for rowers. So depending on when you're watching this video, it might not be out yet and it might already be out. So check that description. If there's a wait list, there'll be a link to sign up for that. Otherwise, if it's out, it's going to be in the description. So definitely check that out if you're looking to add strength training to and a rowing plan it's a combo of both and exactly what i just mentioned two days of strength training with three rowing workouts one of them being more of a high intensity circuit with on and off erg movements so thank you for watching this video today where we talked about combining strength training and rowing whether that's you know one program that you got together from a rowing instructor or whether it's a separate strength training and rowing program that you're trying to combine in the best possible way. I hope you enjoyed the content in this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one.